The, hello, this is the Gaming Space, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Today we'll be going over three of the mods, well, mod parts in Umber, in the Umber Space Industries pack. And in essence, the Umber Industry pack, in Space Industries pack, is like a variety of uh, parts, like probably it's like a large mod that adds anything from sounding rockets. Which we'll be viewing in this mod review to uh, warp drives, which uh, will be at the end of this three-part series, and we'll not only be reviewing sounding rockets, but we'll also be doing, um, you know, some of the small crew capsules as you can see right here, like the derp lifeboat module, all that sort of stuff. And but for, without further ado, let's start off with the sounding rockets. So in essence, well. In, in short, these sounding rockets, they're basically like your very early science. Like, you could... See, this is um, the sounding rocket nose cone. It um, comes with a parachute, it, and it comes with a battery. But the, but the trick is with this battery is that it has 10 units of electric charge. But the, trick, but the thing is, once those electric charge units go out, they cannot be recharged. Because and I bet they made its way to balance it to balance it out. But as you can see here, the cost of this is only fifty. Whereas if you go to the lowest cost satellite, which is this the Putnik, which you don't even get in the beginning, it's three hundred. Compare that to fifty. Yeah, that's saving you you a lot of funds. But not but let, not only is there that, like as shown here, um, there is also. If we go to fuel tank, oh wait, no engines, because they're all solids. This is supposed to be like your third stage motor, which it has a thrust of 20 and it has about 16 solid fuel on it. And keep in mind that these are for, ver these are for only like very early science. I mean, theoretically you could take something like this to Minmus, but this is only for like high altitude suborbital test flights. Like they're out for like your real space program. And, but not only are there that, with these science tabs, there's also these aerodynamic fins that th that this pack offers. That, like, this rocket fin small is meant, um, if we clip it on there for this, this third stage. And then if we, um, attach the second stage, as you notice, I didn't use a decoupler at all. That is because you don't require decouplers, because they are probably so simple. And that is, that is like a neat, really neat feature that I like about this. Because decouplers add a lot of cost to the to the craft that normally could just be avoided, like in this like in this case. So uh, let's put on the medium size fins for this second stage, and then there's even a which has in thirty five um, thrust and I think a th I mean, thirty five solid fuel and a thrust of thirty, and as you can see, we have this first stage. There's a mass of one point three seven five and a Thrust of 125. You don't just put... And the thing is, you, you could put it like this, but it would look ugly. So, in this case, there's one structural part, right? Uh, if I can find it. Right here. The sounding rocket adapter. Which... Adapt, which is perfect for adapting from the second stage to the first stage. And, as you suspect that these rocket fins are for the, um... The large... Um, the first stage. So, uh, let us stage everything. So, this goes here... Uh, this goes here, uh, this goes here, and this goes here. And then, there's not only that, um, there's also, because you can't even do any science with this nose cone alone, so what they have these packages, like this aeronomy sensor array, which is basically like, I don't know what aeronomy means, that's weird. Um, but here's an engineering test bay which provides you with science. Here's a material study, which you would do in a weightless environment normally on, like, sounding rockets and all that stuff. Because what they do normally is they, like, if if somebody wants to have, like, a low-budget, like, thing, like, they need to see what dirt will do under a weightless environment, they either put it on, like, a vomit comet, or they put it on one of these sounding rockets right here. Like, this is what you use a material study for. And then you have a meteorological survey package, which you'd probably send up into the upper atmosphere, collect some data on the weather... And then it would come back down. 
So I think for this one, I'll go with the engineering test bay because, you know, being an engineer and all that, you know, it only fits. So as this is now completed, let us take us out to the launch pad and see it fly. And, but this isn't it. I mean, like I said, there is also the exploration pack and, you know, all that sort of stuff. I mean, with, but the thing is with these sounding rockets, you can't control them. Well, not really. I mean, these fins are only to provide stability. These they aren't they don't provide any they don't control surfaces at all whatsoever. So all you really can do is turn on SAS, go straight up, and launch like that, and see you can see immediately the effects this is having, like the atmosphere effects. Like soon, I think we'll get mock effects when this when this burns out. But you know, this is a yeah. See so you getting the mock effects right there. But the thing is, what you should do with these sounding rockets, wait till the G-Force goes down to 1, separate, and then ignite the second stage. That way you save a lot more Delta V, or by not going through the soupy atmosphere. And that allows you to, which allows you to go a lot, lot higher than you normally would have. So let's do the same thing with the, th the third stage, wait for it to get to 1G, and ignite. And this should get us close to the edge of space, you know, and then we'll go right back down. Ah, oh, this is pretty nice, I mean... Because I did some testing earlier. Oh, we're getting re-entry effects now. Let's see what our Apple Apps is. Oh, we're only at like 50-ish kilometers. I think you need like another first stage or something for that to actually go to 70 kilometers of the official boundary of space. But while we're up here, we can do some high altitude science, but which is useless since I'm in creative mode. But let's just te let's just keep it for the role playing role playing purposes. But anyways, uh, let's just I'll show you how to, how this is basically covered. Um, if this will oh I have to manually time warp, which is kind of a pain, but uh, I will. I'm, I'm promised to try to cut the video sometime soon, but like, I don't know. If it's something short like this, I mean, I really don't need to cut the video, like, if it's like five minutes of this boring stuff, I mean, yeah, I'll cut the video, but this is probably only like 30 seconds this shit max, so, I mean, what, what's, I mean, wh why not? So, let's just wait for this to go down. Um, and let's open the parachute, right, yeah, I'm gonna, just, 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 I'm gonna do a challenge, I'm gonna wait for it to go right above the ground until I deploy the parachute, in three, two, one. Ooh, that was cool, okay, now let's recover the vessel, and, um, let's go back. And show you how the um, exploration pack and the uh, the um, survivability pack work. So we have for at first in the exploration pack we have this AES pod, which is basically a very small crew capsule which you use in rovers and all like very small rovers to like on the like that you first initially send to the moon or Mon or Mar or Duna. And uh, well, as you can see here, I mean, it is it's kind of like kind of like that old command seat but like a lot lighter as you can see this is a mass of 0.15 compared to the lightest which is a lightest stock one version which is a mark one lander can which is a mass of 0.66 well so it kind of gives you some compatibility kind of gives you some portability with that and so let's go to the uh these derp lifeboat modules which are used to um which are obviously used in survivability pack and as we can see the, there isn't really much to do with this. I mean, this, I think you can inflate this, but I'm not too, let, I think, let's just take it out on the launch pad after I show you the dope propulsion module, which is, an, which is, goes right along with this dope lifeboat module. And it's basically like, wait, yeah, so this, so you can't really do anything with it, but until, let's, let's just take it out on the launch pad and test it. Uh, hmm. So if I were to stage this, wait, what's happening? Uh, not, 
you got to be kidding me. Look, let's revert the flight. Let's go to vehicle assembly. Um, let's go to crew. What? I'm confused. Uh, let's just forget that. Okay, anyways. We have this hope jump seat, which is basically like, um... If you know about Joe Kittinger and his space jump, basically he took like a, a command seat kind of like this. He took it up into a balloon and went all the way to 100,000 feet. Stayed there for a second. And then dropped down onto the ground. You see, you need more parts like this because, I mean, I like how, and the because the benefit of this compared to uh, this external command seat is... With the external command seat, you can't have, first of all, you can't have it be a, as like a, as a vessel itself. And second of all, you can't have a crew, a crew board it like you can right here. What you'd have to do like with these external command seats is that you have to have this, and then you have to have like a capsule somewhere, and then you have to have them climb, which is utter nonsense. Just get rid of this and, you know, have them here ready to go. I mean... This would kind of be used for, this could kind of be used for, like, very light rocket stuff. Like, I could have, like, this there, and it would go flying up, you know, at very ridiculously high speeds. But, anyways, let's go back to the, uh, the, uh, I think it's the Hope Maintenance Pod. Which is basically, like, if you were in space, like, in orbit. And, as you can see there, this is, like, a maintenance tool for, like, you go out on EVA, this would be like an enhanced jetpack, basically, with all your maintenance supplies on it. It would be like your own little ship, but, I mean, it does, it's not pressurized. You'd have to, you have to be in a spacesuit to get on it. Um, but, as you, as you can see here, this, if I put up the center of mass, it isn't really that stable. Because, I mean, if I, I once, I mean, if you put it, uh, if you put it like a rocket on here, uh, not, that, that's way overpowered. Put this on here, it'll just uh, it'll just spin out of control. So I don't think you need to see that. But this would be great if you were in orbit and you'd be like that little Starfleet thing with the little the little ships repairing, you know, the larger ships and all that. You know, it'd be like it'll be pretty cool. Um, so now let's go to this Hope Pod. So it's like a little dome, and this would be like another great thing for um you know, rovers and all that stuff, but unlike this one, it's just a still command seat with a dome. There's no, there's no, um, what do you call those, like, controls or anything on, on there that you, that are visible. So I'm assuming you don't have a nav ball or anything like that. But, um, so, anyways, let's go to the, uh, see if there's anything else here. Not, nothing more in part, nothing more in pods. See if there's anything new in fuel tanks. No. In engines, I showed you already the sounding rocket parts, which were part of that. But, but wait. There is, uh, here we have this microducted fan engine, which is basically like a very small, like, as you can see here, like a propeller engine that you use probably on, like, the surface of lathe or... Or maybe even Kerbin, like, you can use this as a small, um, transporter of, like, very, very, like, maybe even, like, a, an individual Kerbinot or something like that. Because you can see here it has a thrust of 40. It, it has a very low ISP because, wait. Yeah, it has a very low ISP of, uh, 450. Because, compare that to a basic jet engine, it has a ISP level of 2,000. Yeah, I don't even know what you'd use this for, but it's it's here. And anyways, um, uh, hmm, nothing new in engines. And if we go to command and control, the only thing new here is this AES RCS block, which is basically, as you can see here, just four blocks of individual RCS thrusters that give you greater maneuverability out in space, probably with a rover or something like that. But if we go to structural, there's a there's a couple of new parts here to experiment around with. We have uh, this AES cargo rack, which is supposed to go here, where you have like a little payload over here, maybe a little rover or something like that. But uh, there's actually there is actually a little rover that goes along with this. If I can um, assemble it, I 
Uh, it's not under aerodynamics, and there's nothing new non under aerodynamics. Is there anything new on utility? Yes, there's the survivability pack, which I will show you in a little bit. But, I'm trying to look for the... Oh yeah, it's right here. Okay, so, here's the rover delivery system for the pack rat rover. I don't know, I do not know why it's so big for such a smallish rover, but, I will assemble it right here. So, say we have this chassis, this weird... Wow, why is doing six? Six time time warp. I mean, not six time symmetry. Okay, so we have the back chassis like this. We have the front chassis like. Uh, wait, what is going on here? Yeah, there we go. The front chassis like this, and then we have these little wheels that you can put on the side, so I can just find the attachment point. Uh. There we go, and then, um, there we go, um, wait, why is this not, excuse me for a minute, don't worry, it's not, it's not really that long, um, anyways, we have this assembled, so let's put this back section on, which looks pretty cool, um, Beta camera. Uh, here's the front section. If I can get these million attachment points on what 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 is going on here? Why? What are you doing? So you have this, and then so. I think I got it. I just have to get this attachment point. What? What? You know, screw it. Screw it. Whatever. Whatever. Um, here's a roof rack. Oh, wait, why isn't? Oh, if I can. Where this supposed to go on the top like that, and then there's. You can have all these crates on here with all these scientific supplies like this. Wait, I put this here. No, there's really nothing to be abusive about that. Oh, and then you have this delivery system where it's just basically a decoupler. That's nice. Um, and then it just rolls out. This is really, pretty, really cool. Um, and then you have also this data camera, which you can just use to, uh, I don't know if there's anything you can do with that. I don't know if there's any enhanced UI. But anyways, um... Hmm. Let's look, let's now look at the floats. Let's just get this out of the way. And, okay. So we have, first, this inflatable float. Uh, 1.25 meter. Wait. Which looks like that. Um, which, and then the 2.5 meter version is pretty much exactly the same. If we, uh, do this. I don't even know why you need that big of a float, but... Uh, we'll test it out once we get to Kerbin's Oceans. But, there's also these radial airbags, which, um, if you've ever seen the landing on, um, of, uh, Spirit and Opportunity on Mars, you know that they've used these airbags to land. And, um, as you can see here, these airbags basically stop your velocity so that you don't need, um, like, if you're on Mars and the atmosphere is very light, this... This would stop your last few meters per second, so your so your valuable equipment doesn't get damaged or anything like that. I mean, if we ta if we take this out on the launch pad and uh, so I can just take it down, deflate airbag. Why is this? What? I think I just glitched the game. Anyways, uh, if I can just find the right attachment point. Inflate airbag, deflate airbag, recharge airbag. Okay, so let's put this out on the launch pad and test test this test the capability of these. Wait, why am I using four times symmetry? Um, to test the capability of these airbags. So, um, anyways, inflate the let's inflate these all. 
Um, and then detach. Oh, oh. Yeah, see, we stopped all our velocity right there. In normal cases, we would have been destroyed. But these airbags stopped our velocity right away. That was very effective. But the but the thing is, if you deflate these airbags, you can't inflate them again. Which is very realistic and a part I like about that. So you can't just inf deflate and reinflate, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, let's just go back to the, to the VAB and uh, look at the, the larger scale um, things. Like if we go, um, so now we've learned about the effectiveness of this. So, uh, let's look at the larger airbags. So, we have this medium-sized version, which looks like this. I don't know if that would stop a, uh, of that capsule or not, but, I mean, I'm kind of too bored to test it out. But, and then we have this, well, not really, but, I mean, it would be redundant for, for you guys, so, I, I, I do have to do it. Um, and then we have these large airbags. Yeah, those are he some heavy-duty airbags. But anyways, uh, not only do we have these radial version of the, the, um, airbags, we have radial versions of the floats, too. So if we go here, let's deploy this float, and, uh, you can see it kind of is a more manageable size. And, uh, I'm sure it's kind of, wait, oh, here we go, retract. Can we, can we re, can we, yeah, we can redeploy these again. But, um, also... If we, yeah, here's the medium-sized versions, um, which are large indeed. And then these large versions, which I'm pretty sure, why would you ever need that? Like, that's like the twice the size of this capsule. Why would you ever need that? I don't even know what these splash effects are, but, uh, let's, let's design a vessel to take it out on the launch pad. And, uh, we're gonna try, test out the floats. So, if we go to this float right here, um, we just test out with a very simple, hmm. You know what? This, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do this. And then put on our winglets like this. And, wait, no. I have, to, and then I have to put on a decoupler. Uh, if I go right here. And then that'll be good. And then we need a parachute. If that will work. And let's flick it on the launch pad to see it. Let's see it go. So. You ready? You ready? In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. That's in surprisingly well for the size of it. But there is one thing, like it kind of looked like this. This is called the Hillbilly Space Program. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It was like, I I knew it was gonna crash because they could have designed the rocket a whole lot better, and that's why it's called Hillbilly Space Program because like they're just dumb with rocketry. Like I'm just like, why would you make this? This would never work in real life. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. But let's just do the staging so that this goes out separately and let's go to here um you know what because i'm just a baller i'm just gonna not wait i'm just gonna wait until we are really close to the water to deploy a parachute and let's do that um rsas there we go let us inflate our floats Which are incredibly large. And, uh... Let us land on the water. As you can see... What- what is going- what is this? What the heck just happened? Well, as you can see, the floats are doing surprisingly well. I mean... I- What- How do I get- What- This isn't- This isn't realistic. What what is going on here? 
Oh my god. Uh... Yeah, we got a problem. You know. Well, I'll leave it, all you things from here. Um, if you like what you saw, then like, comment, subscribe. This is The Gaming Space, signing out.